Brento Cast, episode 32, back for an epic, epic, epic update. It's been about a month, guys, uh, just a couple days short of a month since the last episode, and a lot has gone down in that time. Um, without uh, boring you, I will say that uh, it has been a super, super busy early or late winter month with a lot of very strange weather here uh, where I live in Albemarle, North Carolina. That aside, we managed to get a lot done and uh, be very, very progressive with our work toward all aspects of life, really. <laughs> the store is doing super, super hopping busy business. Um, there may be a little bit of di disruption in my work schedule because I may be having to take over some of my son's duties. He's being very negligent because he's gotten interested in door-to-door -door sales. Hey, man, it happened to me. Um, you know, that's better than some other things he could be interested in. So, you know, I'm just trying to support his decision to want to get out there. But he has a really great job with an almost executive salary. Um, it's physical labor, yeah, but it's just one thing. And so he talks to me as if it's the hardest thing in the world making smoothies all days. And I'm like, son, you've never dug ditches. You've never uh, warehouse pipe. Um, you've never been a welder. You've never been a crane operator. You've never been a carpenter. All these things your boy has done here. And I can tell you definitively that while that may not be the easiest job, if you can watch Netflix while you do it, it ain't a hard job. Okay. So anyway, I may be taking over for him for a short time while he goes out in the world and figures out that everybody doesn't treat you like your mom and your dad. But hey, this is life. Um, some things have happened in the last couple of weeks that have really made me a bit introspective. Um, when I wake up in the morning, um, well, one thing, let me just say, I've been eating clean and I've lost a little bit of weight as re regards to that. And, um, uh, also a result of that. And I also, I'm, I'm feeling really good. So, um, when I'm feeling good, I'm feeling creative when I'm feeling creative, um, you know, busy at the grindstone of music, trying to create, 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 because that's what I'm here for. And, uh, the studio has been just going great. We've just about put down at least something for each and every song on two albums, uh, that Harrison and I are doing at Snug Record Studios. Eddie Snugs, the man. Thank you so much for your support. Um, we have been getting some good stuff down. And, um, you know, as a player, I always aspire to be better and better. And I've had a chance to sort of prepare some things and get myself on this album in some new ways. I once again played drums on a song, which is not something I typically do. Um, but back to gratefulness and thankfulness and mindfulness. Um, my good friend, my good online friend, Les Linden Garner, aka Sixus One, the great artist, that's what I think of him as. Um, I guess an inter casual internet buddy of mine going back to 2003. Um, and you know, at least on some level, our friend in real life. We're not super close friends, but but I, he's somebody I've always respected for sure. Um, I definitely thought there was a time that we were going to be buddies. I mean, I went all the way up to Kentucky to visit him, stay with him for, I don't know, four or five days. We did a show together, a music show, great musician and all, all this, and just super talented, very much like the kind of character that I sort of envisioned myself trying to be in many, many ways. Um, but... Uh, Unfortunately, he had a little health crisis that paralyzed him on his uh, left side, and he's he's really working to recover from that. And um, seeing somebody that you know well enough to care about um, go through that and what, what that they can share on social media, um, gosh, it really gives you a, a focus uh, on your own self and the things that you normally complain about. We complain about every day. How's it going? How's it going? In Japan, I will say this. When somebody asks you, how's it going, or how are you doing, you, resp you respond solely as uh, with, with uh, Genki Desu. I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm fine. Because compared to most people in this world, chances are you probably are fine. If you get up in the morning, you got two legs at work, two hands at work, you got all your fingers, you got your eyes, you got your ears, you got your sense of smell, you can taste food. You are ahead of many, many people in this world, my friends. So... Um, how are you doing today? You're doing great today. Today's a special day. Every day above ground is a special day. That's the truth, Ruth. Believe it. Your boy Johnny Brento said it, maybe not first, but finally. Um, anyway, sucks to see him going through that. And um, today's his birthday. Now, he doesn't typically follow my social or anything else, so he probably won't hear this. But hey, Les, if you do happen to hear episode 22 of Brento Cast on March 19th, 2023, happy birthday, bud. 
Brento loves you. Moving right along, we have been doing so much cool stuff with Delilah, and I'm, I'm ever trying to expand her horizons. I mean, I'm really getting that feeling that her childhood has almost slipped away from us. Uh, she's only going to be a little kid for maybe like another year and a few months. I mean, she's already exhibiting signs of, you know, becoming her own girl and her own person. Uh, but she's still self-aware enough to know that, like, we're tight, and she'll grab me and say, Papa, you're my best friend. I love you. And I'm like, if you aren't the sweetest kid, give me that face. I'm going to kiss you right now. She's a big hugger and kisser. When we part, she always wants to give me a hug and a kiss. And she's actually that way with her little friends too. It's really sweet to see. Um, but I have, uh, I've continued to keep her in uh, gymnastics, which I, Big shout out to Stanley County Gymnastics. You guys do amazing work. I'm not sure you even realize how important the work you do is. God bless you. Miss Paige, Shay, all y'all over there, we love you. I appreciate the work that y'all do. And I, you, they talk about never getting like short with a kid or impatient. And those kids once in a while have bathroom accidents and stuff that you'd rather not deal with. They're awesome. They are really awesome. But the cool thing is I can see it. And I have a client that's a longtime student over there. And um, she um, is very mature for her age. And I just my takeaway is that they produce really solid human beings over there, boys and girls. So I'm impressed with that place. And I think that, you know, the old saying, the old adage, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. I can tell you firsthand this is true because me and Chris were left to our own devices and we did things like shoot small animals, uh, you know, uh, torture frogs, throw darts at frogs, shoot each other. Uh, it's a miracle that we both got out of childhood with both of our eyes. We've both been shot multiple times with pellet rifles. Um, Chris embedded a pellet into his own thumb to see if he could catch it. He shot me in the chest with an arrow. Thank God the tip broke off when it hit my sternum and didn't you know, impale me. He ran over me with a four-stroke Kodak motorcycle, um, threw a barbell in my face, threw gasoline in my face. Um, I did some stuff to him too, which we won't talk about, <laughs> but, but the point is, um, that's cause we were, it was left up to us. Like, you know, we were children of the eighties. It was left up to us to entertain ourselves and entertain ourselves. We did, we built flamethrowers. We burnt an entire field of grass uh, without permission. Um, it, you know, we made fire bombs. <laughs> we liked fire, man. What can I tell you? It was an awesome. It was an awesome time. But that that world is gone now. So I think that uh, you know, the what what's out there for kids to entertain themselves now is not so harmless. Like I really do think, giving my kids access to the internet as early as I did, did them no favors. Um, I think there's character flaws in both of them that I could attribute to that. And uh, you know, given the opportunity to have something to do with Delilah being raised up, I don't want her to have access to the internet until she's 18 years old, really, apart from like uh, stuff required for school. But, um, you know, she's going to, she's going to be a musician. I mean, she's already got it in her. She sings my songs. She memorizes lyrics, uh, you know, at three and a half. Come on. This kid is here to be a musician and I'm going to make sure that she has the tools she needs. One of those tools is in the next year, I want to start going through the Beato book with her. This teaches me and it sort of enforces for her that there's actually a blueprint to go by when it comes to music. I mean, the creative part, you just kind of come to that. But the theory part, it's it's all there. And there are people like Rick Beato who can lay it out for you in a way that uh, is... Um, it's pretty easy to understand compared to other uh, pitches I've seen for for music theory. Having a guy like Harrison in my life, I told him today, I was like, man, it was one of the best days of my life when you walked in the store and said, hey, I want to talk to Brent about music. Bam. I mean, it really was. It, it changed the course of the river. You know what I mean? The river of music that was flowing in my life. It changed the course of it. And it got me back more into theory, which is something I really needed to expound on. Why? Do the Almond Brothers solo sound so different than, say, you know, like um, Skinner solos, for example? Um, the type um, scales they were choosing made them sound really unique, and we're actually doing one of their songs this week. Uh, but I don't want to jump. I want to get ahead of myself. Anyway, things are going great with Delilah. We had an epic week this weekend. Uh, we uh, culminating this weekend with us taking her Saturday up to. Um, Salisbury for to Shuck and Shack, one of the places we like to eat seafood at. And I walked with her from there over to the park, and uh, the park is just really awesome. And there's kids just going 
wild. And eventually, we played for about an hour, and she encountered this little girl named um, Ileana, I believe, and we uh, friended her grandmother. They lived close to there, uh, so they could have another play date. But they were so cute. They were just really, really quick buddies, and I got a little video of it. If you want to see that, you can pop over to BrentBowers.com and check out, um, I believe it is in um, Weekly Vlog March 20th, 2023. Part 3 would be that one. Uh, as always, uh, we did some hiking this week. We did some stuff. I videoed almost all of it. And, um, so we have probably about, uh, almost, uh, 40 minutes of video up there on that. But, uh, yeah, go check that out. Um, from there, we went on over to Davidson town center, um, for, um, actually our town cinemas in Davidson. And we tried to watch Shazam. Now, I think Delilah could have got through with it, except the fact that she did not take her nap that day, which is crazy because she played so hard. But uh, we got there, and we got there 20 minutes early, so we went in there, and we had our snacks and stuff, and getting to eat in there, she was kind of blown away by that, and had a great time doing that, but she didn't go to sleep like I thought she would, and she wasn't calm enough to sit through the whole movie, so after about half an hour of that, we had to take turns taking her out, and that was kind of a bummer, but on the bright side, I actually went back and bought the first Shazam movie today on Vudu, and it gave me a free ticket to go see the movie again, so perhaps I will go this week, maybe Wednesday night, and pop out and see Shazam, uh, the new Shazam, uh, I forget the name of it, Something of the Gods, um, for free uh, to get the rewatch, but I, what I watched, it, you know, it's, it's not a serious story, it's just a bunch of cool special effects, and superhero battles and in that sense i enjoyed it it was very lighthearted. some funny jokes in it you know kids almost cussing things like that you know there were a few words that popped out on the previews that i had to kind of cover delilah's ears or try to um and the thing is if she hears a word like let's say s-h-i-t for example she'll she'll pop right back and say that immediately um you know she knows she's not supposed to say it she doesn't know what it means of course but she will uh she will let her rip man She'll go weapons free in a quick quick second. I don't I don't like that. So I want to keep her innocent and sweet for as long as possible. Um, so crazily enough, we haven't been really seeking out players to play live, but you know we had this opportunity to come along to play these little free uh, sets down at uh, Social Saturdays um, at. Um, downtown and so we're doing that and we were able to kind of come up with a quorum for an electric band now first this was going to be lee mcrae who's been talking to us about playing for some time but um as it turned out uh joe helms who i've played with many many times aka joe daddy helms of uh brent bowers fame playing at harmanco's little tokyo all around joe and i have been friends since i was about 11 years old and he's been a drummer pretty much all that time. Um, ironically, we've never been in like a fully formed band together. We've played in a couple churches together. But Joe's back in the picture now, and he's willing to uh, give us one rehearsal every other week as his schedule can afford. And that's worked out pretty good. So we, we got together, and Lee uh, really was the sleeper in the whole thing. I thought he was just a little guy who played a little bit of drums, but he's actually proficient on guitar and bass. So um, he jumped in on bass, Harrison on lead guitar, me on rhythm guitar and primary vocals, and that's worked out pretty good. So what we're going to try to do for this first show, you know, only having had really two rehearsals together, is we're going to try to do 10 songs. You know, that's coming up this Saturday at 6.30 at the uh, covered uh, little area down there by the Water Fountain downtown Albemarle. Uh, we're going to try to play those 10 songs and just rock them out, and then we'll just turn around and play those 10 again or whatever. And uh, as the summer goes on, we'll do more and more ambitious stuff, and we'll try to add new songs every time. And, you know, my thinking is if we can get through these 10 shows, um, they're, they're legitimate shows too, an hour and a half in length. That's almost as long as Harrison and I play at Loafers. Then perhaps we can do an electric, electric performance maybe at some other spots, perhaps, um, perhaps at Loafers, perhaps elsewhere around here. But that'd be a good way to put the band together to have like shows to go to and to go do so that it's not just endless practice. Um, and I don't know if these guys will be interested in going in the studio with us, but if they are, that might be something that could happen too. Um, did have a two-hour session, really kind of a planning session uh, on finishing off the uh, Southern Lane album that Harrison and I are working on because we're getting in the short rows now and we really kind of had to prioritize the last few things. That'll still be the quickest album that I've ever done by a long shot. 
Um, and then after that, we earlier in the year recorded an album we called Five by Five, which was intended kind of as an acoustic only record. <coughs> we did that with Tony Torres. Building the songs around hand percussion really, really changed them dramatically, and we got some interesting results. And that's that's an album unto itself. But I really would like to have um, Tony in on the electric album, and I think that's probably going to happen at some point. But we'll take those recordings, which are, you know, charming and they're good enough, but they're done on our home gear, not at the big studio. And I think we will take them to Snug Records for final mixing, and that'll be that'll be a revelation for those. I think and allow me to kind of get a little bit better singing. Um, so that is something we definitely look forward to. But in any case, uh, the album's coming along great. I've also popped out to Phil Hartzell's house a couple times here and just did some live performing and, and well, I mean, like, you know, just for jams and stuff and made little little videos and stuff. And I always try to work on things that we're actually working on in the studio. And I did a, a version of one of my songs from that with... Um, with Lee and Phil, which is totally different because Phil, didn't, you know, he's just kind of making it up on the spot because he doesn't really know the tune uh, from the way we're recording it in the album. But it's kind of interesting to uh, put yourself in those scenarios. And uh, he also is a Studio One guy. Secret Studios here is a user and owner of Studio One with the, the big board. But we've gotten away from that. But my hope is that Harrison and I can get all that set back up, more headphones, more cables, and have it where when, you know, four guys are up here everybody can have their own dedicated channel and we actually record each practice um just for posterity but also to kind of build the band and maybe eventually who knows perhaps a live album will come from some of that but anyway the five by five album we're calling that the acoustic album and that will be available strictly at album on nutrition i believe we're going to sell it on jump drops only you won't be able to get it on itunes because it's a bit of a takeaway it's not like a full-fledged album it is but it isn't we we didn't go crazy on redoing things and trying to make it precision 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 we did record it to a click track with the exception of one song but it has for example saxophone that was recorded up here and and things like that it has hand pan you'll never hear me use hand pan on another record probably i mean it's just it's just one of them odd things if you don't know what a pan pan is it's like a bronze uh, steel drum with little divots on it that you can play beats on build rhythms around and uh you know being that tony was in the house we utilized him. That was kind of the whole point. But I digress. It is going very, very well indeed. Um, the studio has been a dream this summer, and I just I just hope to, while we're, Harrison and I are just firing on all cylinders, I just hope to build on that, finish off these two records, uh, do something with my Two Spies music, whether it's make another Two Spies album like, you know, sans Terry on, on the musical part of it and just build the songs with Harrison and I and then perhaps reach out to Terry and see if I can get him to come sing on it with me or maybe another singer. Who knows? Uh, I, I don't know what the future holds. I just know those songs are good. Um, and I'm particularly enthusiastic to record the ones that, that I wrote for that project that have never really been properly recorded. It's a, it's a thing. It's a thing, you know, it's, it's not Southern rock. It's not really all that Americana. It's more folky. Um, and I don't have an album like that. Um, I think Harrison and I probably, after we do these two albums we're on now, we have the last half of the V Hill Brothers album project coming up in June, I believe, which hopefully this time, I think we're going to do it a little bit differently than last time and not put so much pre-work in it because a lot of that work was thrown out, unfortunately. Um, there is actually a song from that called Let Yourself Go that we did an alternate version of, and I think we may actually finish that out just as a one-off and you know, just give that away or whatever, but, uh, very Southern rock the way we did it and wasn't what Dale was looking for. So we redid that song with some crazy counting. Um, but the one song he sent me for the, uh, the new, uh, sessions is pretty straightforward. So I'm hopeful that we can all just kind of show up and record that in the moment with them, get their vocal right then and there. And it'd be more of a, there in the room for the creation of the whole song, uh, thing and if I know the songs are simple enough then I don't have to worry that we'll be able to come up with something brilliant you know on the spot you know I, I've done a, I did a lot of um, a lot of backing um, vocals and heavy production things like that before and I don't think that that is really even an, an, something that I necessarily need to do for um, this second half of, of, of the project 
I look for a lot of that to sort of take care of itself. They were really happy with what we did last time, but thinking of the whole thing as an album, you don't really need to have every song be like, you know, the fifth symphony. Um, holistically, we can kind of get by with some smoother things that just have more of those guys on it and a little bit less of us, I guess. Um, I don't know. You just, you kind of, kind of have to know the project. I know what I'm talking about, but, um, hopefully that'll be just like three, four up three, four down. Um, so yeah, it's just the brothers this time. The, uh, the daughter of one of them is not coming for these sessions. I understand. So, uh, maybe a little bit less challenging arrangementally speaking, but it should be straightforward and I look forward to getting through that. But then I would like to do an album where we write, um, kind of in the style of Jackson Brown. Like if you listen to Jackson Brown essentials on iTunes playlist, that's, that's what I mean. Just really classical instrumentation, 1970s production values and, um, it's something that I see working for us. So, and I don't think we have to struggle that hard to get there. Um, with regards to Southern Lane, you know, like I, I might have mentioned, we are doing a second album in, in the middle of all that called Bowers Foreman One. Uh, it's just more of a progressive sound. It's not Southern rock. And um, But the finishing up the songs on, um, I think we're going to have leftover tunes that potentially would go on a second Southern rock somewhere down the road or an Americana album. But uh, we're going to do Harrison's song called Waiting on the World to Turn, um, kind of a rocked up Southern rock version of that, which we'll be performing live this Saturday, actually, downtown. But uh, we're going to do that one, and then perhaps we will do my tribute song to a couple of people that have passed away, and that song is called Consequences. You heard a little bit of that in the tag for the song called middle of the madness that i did for ansel brown that was released two years ago on halloween um his project has more or less kind of hit a roadblock i don't want to say too much about why um i'm not sure why to be honest with you i think he wants to finish it i know we want to finish it and either that'll happen or it won't i mean i guess that's where i could leave it um i know it's just been really difficult to get things lined up and i feel like we're three to four sessions away from finishing that and then, of course, that begs the question, what happens to my songs uh, that were contributed to that, uh, that basically I wrote and, um, you know, he was just going to, I was just going to let him release some of those. Um, and I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. I do know that two or three of them really are part of the uh, project that I did in Nashville and I kind of want them on that album. And if they're not going to go on his album, we'll just, it, you know, it remains to be seen, I should say. Uh, we'll just have to figure it out. But um, anyway, we've we, we've talked long enough now. We've we've updated everybody on the happenings around town, <laughs> so to speak. And I think uh, we'll have another great week. Uh, just keep moving forward. I am not in the studio this Wednesday, which is a rarity. Oh, I got to tell you about me having to pay the idiot tax. I put my brand new 360 camera on my drone after I was successfully able to fly one of my lighter 360 cameras. And um, I think it actually would have flown it, but I had to be a smart guy and put the selfie stick on there to get it further away from the drone so I'd have less to edit out. And man, it crashed so hard and it put a scratch right on the lens. And I was like, so I was like broke. It was like 700 bucks. But I went ahead and took some test shots with it. And fortunately, it scratched the lens in sort of the lower quadrant. And that's a place that's usually um, kind of pointed at the sky. Um, I was able to, I barely could even see where it was at cause it's, it's so close, but it wasn't really typically stuff that scratches in the center lens. That's your problem. This is the lower angle where it actually hit the wood deck out there. It did break a propeller on my, um, my drone, but I think I probably got a backup and it's certainly not a bad, bad thing. It probably fell like 10 feet or whatever, but it was kind of coming down at an angle. And the fact that it actually had my, the selfie stick and my expensive camera broke the fall of the drone. So it wasn't that bad, but, um, I feel like a moron for doing that because I, I could have stuck with what I knew would work, but the safer, uh, smaller camera requires a lot of post work to make those images big enough and what I really want for my HDRI. But I digress. There's now, there's now a new HDRI script out where you can make HDRIs out of CG sets, and I'm going to explore making some sellable products out of that. I've played with it a little bit tonight, and it seems to work fine. So uh, perhaps you'll see some of those, and it'll be crazy things like pirate islands and secret coves and things that are a lot more fantical space scenes and whatnot so um yeah we'll see how that goes but anyway i don't want to beleaguer the point it's time to uh time to 
chop it off here uh, at Sunday night. Uh, getting latish and about ready to go home and watch some uh, TV. And uh, yeah, man, we're gonna call it. This week's been a good one. Hope you guys have a great one, and we'll talk to you once again when Brento Cast returns in episode thirty-three. This, of course, being episode thirty-two. Peace out, everybody.